Let me learn. Today I am going to do example four, manufacturing. It reads as follows. The information below refers to LM manufacturers. LM manufacturers produces caramel, uh, caramel biscuit chocolate. They supply retailers around the country. LM uses a markup of 60%. Please highlight that. We might need to use that later on. And then it says the following balances were found in the general ledger. Now, also highlight the dates because they will actually tell you as to what the beginning of the financial year is and what the end of the financial year is. Um, you can easily tell that the 1st of March 2021 is the beginning of the financial year. And obviously all of those amounts that are given, all those balances that are given on the 1st of March, 2021 will be opening balances. So those will be um, balances at the beginning of the year. Those will be balances at the beginning of the year. And the balances that are given to you on the 28th of Feb, 2022 will be balances at the end of the year. Those will be balances at the end of the year. I will start with raw materials stock. Raw material stock amounts to 420,000 at the beginning of the financial year. And at the end of the financial year, I am not given any balance. I will simply go straight to my raw materials note, which is my raw material cost note, and simply record that amount. And I will start with balance at the beginning of the year, it's 420,000. Done with the first one. Let's go back to the information. And then it gives us work in progress at the beginning of the year. So work in progress at the beginning of the year will be 85,120. At the end of the year, work in progress will be 121,520. Where will we record these amounts? It will be recorded in the production cost statement. Work in progress at the beginning of the year, we are simply going to edit. So we'll put it as positive, we're gonna edit, which was 85,120. Work in progress at the end of the year, we are going to subtract it. And we are going to subtract that 121,520. Let us go back to the question again. And then it gives us consumable stores on hand. Consumable stores on hand at the beginning of the year were 4,500 and at the end of the year will be 6,500. Where are we going to record consumable stores on hand? Consumable stores in hand will be recorded in factory overhead. Now in the factory overhead account, we are going to add this 4,500 and subtract the 6,500. Because there are things in between that I need to take into account, I will keep this on hold. All I know is that it goes to factory overhead. The opening balance I will add it and the closing balance is going to be subtracted in the factory overhead account. I'll come back to that. 
Then we've got finished goods. Finished goods at the beginning of the year amounted to 500,000. At the end of the year, they amounted to 750,420. Where are we going to record those two amounts? They will be recorded in cost of sales note. Balance at the beginning of the year, we are simply going to edit. Balance at the end of the year, we are going to subtract it. Remember, this will go to cost of sales note. I will start with my opening balance of finished goods. My opening balance of finished goods will be 500,000 of which I said I will add it up. And then I will less the value of my closing balance of finished goods and the value of my closing balance of finished goods will be 750,420. Let's go back to the question. Now you'll realize that as I read information, I record it. So far, I know that I'm done with this. I'm also done with finished goods. As you read, you need to make sure that you don't go back to that transaction for you to save time. Raw materials. We know that this will definitely go to raw materials note. They say raw materials purchased during the year amounted to 1,506,000. Before I record that, I will simply go to the next one, which says that effective raw materials were returned to the supplier. So I know that I will simply take this cost, which is purchase of raw materials, and subtract this 172,000. Let us go to raw materials cost. Remember in this raw materials cost account, already I recorded the balance at the beginning of the year, but I didn't have any balance at the end of the year. And I will simply write purchases, but from your purchases, you need to minus returns. These are returns, these are raw materials we are retaining back to the supplier. It reduces our purchases for the year. When you take 1,506,000 and minus 172,000, it'll give us 1,334,000. I'll move on. Then we go to salaries and wages. This simply means that we are done with raw material cost, okay? We are done with raw material cost and you realize that we have a couple of things missing there. Let me just go back to the note and take note of what is missing. They didn't give us any transportation cost for transporting raw materials from the supplier to the business, which we normally refer to as courage inwards. Here we don't have courage inwards, therefore I'll just have zero. We also do not have custom duties. Custom duties are simply tax on goods that we import, the tax on goods that we have bought from overseas. When you buy goods from overseas, you pay tax on them. In this case, there are no raw materials that we purchase from overseas Therefore, a custom duty 
will be zero. Remember, we were not given the closing balance. And so far, we also do not have raw material cost, which makes things a little bit complicated because without the closing balance, we may not calculate raw material cost. I will continue until I have done everything and then use what I've got, or until I get what I need that will help me calculate raw material cost. What are they saying about salaries and wages? They told us that salaries and wages amount to 691,000, and of this amount, 195,000 was paid to the factory foreman. We know that any salary and wage that is paid to a factory foreman or factory supervisor will be recognized as indirect labor. So we know that this will go to factory overheads because it is indirect labor. And then they told you that of the same amount, which is 691,000, 180 of that will be split equally between admin and sales staff. And of the same amount, in that amount included in that 695,000, it is 92,000 that was paid to the cleaner. Again, the cleaner, we don't know whether they spend, the cleaner spends uh, all the time at the factory. We do not know that. I will simply use that information that I've read and record it. I know that for direct labor, I will only calculate the amount of salaries and wages that relates to all the employees that are directly involved in making the product. I will simply take the total and minus what doesn't belong to direct labor minus all the wages that do not relate to employees that are directly involved in making the product. I will take that 691,000 minus 195,000 minus 180,000 and minus 92,000. I'll be left with wages, factory wages, wages that relate to employees that were directly involved in making the product, and that will be 224,000. Okay. That 195, what was it for? The 195, remember, it relates to factory forming. Therefore, it'll go straight to manufacturing overheads. But before I go there, I just want to read everything on salaries and wages. They told me that the cleaner spends three over four, three quarters, the cleaner spends three quarters, at the factory. Meaning that three quarters of this 92,000 here will be a factory overhead. And then they said, a factory cleaner spends a quarter of her time 
cleaning offices. So offices that will go straight to administration. The last point says that the business contributes, that is what I mean, the business contributes 10% to the pension fund and 1% to the UIF on behalf of all employees. So all employees, um, they get a pension fund contribution as well as the UIF contribution, all of them whether they are directly involved in making the product or they're indirectly involved in making the product or they work at the admin or sales uh, department, all of them qualify for the pension fund contribution as well as the UIF contribution. And they told you that it's 10%. It's always 10% of their gross salary or wage. It is always 10% of gross salary or wage. Please note that it should be, your gross salary should only be a basic salary. It shouldn't include any bonuses. It shouldn't include any amounts paid for overtime. It must be a basic gross salary. When I say a basic gross salary, a basic gross salary is a salary before you add over time before you add bonuses and before you minus all the deductions. Note that when you calculate the cost to company for employee, an employee or any worker, your initial cost will be the gross salary or the basic salary, plus over time, plus bonuses if there are any, plus the contributions that you are making. Note that contributions are additional expenses to the company because it's an extra amount that you have to pay to the employee in addition to paying their basic salary or their gross salary. These are additional expenses. A lot of students tend to confuse contributions by the employer and deductions. Please note that deductions are taken from the employee's salary or wage. So deductions are in actual fact paid by the employee. The company has nothing to do with deductions. They are paid by the employee. Even though the payment is made by the employer, they are actually paid by the employee. The employer is just an agent, a middleman that makes sure that the payments are paid to the respective funds. Mm -hmm. However, the contributions are additional expenses and because they're additional expenses, we need to include them when we calculate the cost um, that the company has incurred for employing a particular, um, a particular employee. So what am I going to do here? I am simply going to go to my direct labor, take that 224,000 and calculate employer's contribution. Employer's contribution will be made up of the pension fund contribution as well as the UIF contribution. Pension fund contribution will be 10% of the basic wage, which is 224,000. And UIF will be 1% of the basic wage. It will be 1% of 224,000. And that will simply give us the total contributions by the employer. In this case, the total contribution by the employer will be 24,640. We didn't have any overtime or bonuses, therefore those two will just be zero, giving us our direct labor cost of 248,640.
as I've said, overtime and bonuses will simply be zero. Okay, because I'm done with direct labor cost, I will record this straight in my production cost statement. And when you look at the answer book, for your production cost statement, we have already calculated working progress at the beginning of the year, and we also recorded working progress at the end of the year, but we were not given direct material cost. Remember, we couldn't calculate direct material cost. But when you look at the production cost statement, you will realize that there is a figure that is given to you, which is prime cost. Now, as I've said, we are going to have direct material cost of which we didn't have. Direct labor cost of which we just calculated, which was 248,640. When we add direct material with direct labor cost, we'll get prime cost. However, when you look at the answer book, prime cost were given and prime cost amounted to 1,105,000. Remember, for me to get prime cost, I have to add these two, direct material cost and direct labor cost. Then I will get prime cost. So 248,640 minus, well, I will simply say 1,105,000 minus 248,640, it'll give me that 856,000, which is my direct labor cost. I'll go back a little bit. For me to get this, I know that if I take this and I add it with this, it'll give me that. So all you have to do is just to perform reverse operation. By taking this minus in that, it'll give you this direct material cost, which is in this case, 856,360. Otherwise you can do math um, by math, you will simply say 248,640 plus X must give you that 1,105,000. So you can say 248,640 minus X, it should give you 1,105,000. And then you just solve for X. I'm sure you know grade eight meds where you just have to transpose that 246, um, 248,640 to the right hand side and minus it from that uh, 1,105,000. You will get a, um, well, whatever you get there, you will simply divide it by negative um, X and it will give you the actual amount that you need um, and that will be your direct material cost. I don't know why I said to minus here, it's actually plus, okay? Um, so when you take that 248,640 to the right hand side, it will be plus. So you will have, um, to the right hand side, it will be minus. So you will have 1,105,000 
minus that 248,614. it will simply give me that 856,360. Now that I have direct material cost, I am going to go back to my direct raw materials and put it there. Remember I had everything, but I was missing raw material cost. Now I have it, which is 856,360, I've just calculated it. And that will enable me to calculate the balance at the end of the year by performing a reverse operation. I'm gonna take this um, 856,360 minus 1,334,000 minus 420,000 and I will get a negative 897,640, which is just the balance at the end of the year. Or you could have just taken that 420,000, add it with 1,334,000, and then minus 856,360, and that will give you balance at the end of the year. Okay. I'm not done. I'm going to finish off my salaries and wages by going to indirect labor, which goes under factory overheads. I will include the basic wage of the um, supervisor, okay, um, the factory foreman, which was 95000 I will add the employer's contribution, which is 10% of that 195,000, and then add the UIF contribution, which is 1% of that 195,000. And then I am going to add the wage that was paid to the cleaner. But when you calculate the way that was paid to the cleaner, you need to be very careful because you can't take the whole 92,000, only three quarters of, what, uh, of that 92,000 must come to indirect labor. Three quarters of 92,000 will give us 69,000. On that 69,000, you will include pension contribution as well as the UIF contribution. Pension contribution will be 69,000 um, times 10%, and UIF contribution will be 69,000 times 1%. All of these will give us our indirect labor. And that will be 293,040. Please note that in the answer book, they have split the two. They gave you a rule for the factory foreman, and they also gave you a rule for the factory cleaner. And obviously, um, the whole calculation that I've included um, in the column in the row under indirect labor will be recorded um, in the, you're gonna put it in brackets uh, for the wage or the total cost to the company that must be paid to the cleaner. Okay. 
after that, I'm gonna go back to the wage. Remember on that wage, they told us that there was 180,000. That 180,000 was split between two departments, which was between selling and distribution and admin. So I will include half of 180, which is 90, that is your gross wage, and then include the employer's contribution towards the pension, which is 10% of the gross wage, and then include um, the 1% UIF contribution by the employer, and that will give you the total wage that must go to selling and distribution. On the same note, I'll go to admin and do the same thing. Because it was split equally, admin will have the same process. All right. But with admin, I'm not done. Remember with the factory cleaner, they said the factory cleaner spends three quarters at the factory and one day in the office, cleaning the office. The office part will also come to administration cost note. So we are going to take the gross salary um, of the cleaner, which will be 92,000 minus 69,000. Remember 69,000 went to um, went to factory overheads. Or you can simply do a simple calculation. Just take that 92,000 and multiply it by one divided by three. It was actually one um, divided by four. And it will give you 23,000. A quarter was spent at the office, cleaning the office. So you're gonna include the gross wage to the cleaner plus the pension contribution plus the UIF contribution of 1% and that will give us the total cost uh, to the company with respect to the cleaner and that will be 25,530. I am going to go back to the question to check if I have recorded everything. Okay. The first point, all of this was recorded, that was recorded, that was recorded, that was recorded. The second point relates to the cleaner, that was recorded. And the quota that relates to the office was also recorded. The contributions that relates to all employees were also recorded. Now I can simply say I'm done with salaries and wages. Now we go into consumables. What are they saying about consumables? Consumable stores purchased during the year amounted to 17,000. Okay, I'll take note of that. So I know that, remember consumables, we have balance at the beginning of the year. Consumable stores uh, normally will be recorded under factory overheads, but I can't conclude that it goes to the factory. Consumable stores were used in the factory. I need to read the entire thing to assess whether everything must go to factory overheads or not. Okay, and then they said defective consumable stores or consumable goods worth 3,000 were returned to the supplier. Okay, so I know that if I have 17,000, I'm gonna take the 4.5 at the beginning of the year, add the 17,000, which is the purchases, and minus the returns of 3,000, and minus the closing balance of 6,500. I did that at the beginning. Rewind this video if you are a little bit confused as to what I'm doing right now or what I'm saying. Then they said to you, Two thirds of consumable stores are used in the factory. I was waiting just for that. And then obviously, if two thirds are used in the factory, it means that one third will be used at the selling and distribution side. Now, let's record this. Since I know, now I know that part of consumable stores will go to factory overheads as consumable. Okay, 
And now, in the factory overhead node, consumables will start with balance at the beginning of the year, add purchases of 17,000 and minus 3,000, which were returns. These were supplies of consumable stores that were returned back to the supplier of 3,000 and minus the closing balance, which was 6,500. And then you close the brackets, only two thirds must go to factory overheads, which will be 8,000. Remember anything that has to do with manufacturing a product, but is not directly involved, or we cannot directly trace it to the product will be recorded under factory overheads. That's why these consumable stores are recorded under factory overheads. But we were also told that one third of these consumables will be recorded in selling and distribution. So I will do exactly that. Go to selling and distributions, just put everything in brackets and multiply it by one third and that will give me 4,000. Consumable stores, the entire consumable stores um, account has been distributed. Remember the rule, guys. Adjust and then distribute. Adjust and then distribute. You don't distribute and adjust. You adjust and then distribute. You don't distribute these amounts individually. When I say distribute or allocate, it's simply you um, calculating how much goes to factory overheads, how much goes to admin, how much goes to selling and distribution. That is allocations. But before you allocate, you must just adjust. So in this case, we needed to figure out how much consumable stores were actually used. So if we take that 4,500 plus 17,000 plus 3,000 minus 6,500, it will tell us consumable stores that were actually used. Remember when we did inventory surplus and deficits in financial statements, we are applying the same principle. After determining what has been used, remember what has been used becomes our actual expense. But now this expense, part of it will be part of the cost price of the product, but only the part that relates to manufacturing process will be the part of the cost price of the product. And we're gonna include that and the factory overheads. Selling and distribution is just a normal expense. Um, it's just a normal operating expense. We're gonna record it as a normal operating expense in the income statement, but this has nothing to do with manufacturing. This amount cannot be recorded in our production cost statement. Remember in the production cost statement, we are calculating the final cost that relate only to the manufacturing of the product. In this case, all the products. Okay, I am done with consumable stores. So you know what I'm gonna do here. Cross it up. Crossing out is important. What I'm teaching you here is that when you apply this in all the accounting questions that you answer you will actually save so much time. So you know that you read one statement once and then you record the entire statement and you don't go back to it. Okay, that is the principle. All right. I am now going to continue. Let's go to the next point. They say the following costs are to be split between three departments according to floor space. So we know that 200 of the floor space is for the factory. 50 is for sales department. And the other 50 is for the admin department. I'm going to first find my total floor space. How do I find my total floor space? I am going to take the 200, add it with the 50 that goes to selling and distribution, add it to the 50 that goes to admin, and it will give me my total floor space. Because I know that I have to distribute according to the total floor space. 
And when you use the total floor space, you're going to go back to what you have learned about SPARM. You always, when you deal with fractions, you always multiply by what you want, you divide by what you have. In this case, we know that the total 100% is 300. The total will be 300. And what you want, if you want um, factory, you will your numerator will be 200. If you want any amount that goes to sales, your numerator will be 50. If you want any amount that goes to admin, your numerator will be 50. But remember the rule, adjust. We have done adjustments thus far. You adjust, you process the adjustment first before you allocate. Okay, adjust before you allocate. Adjust before you allocate. Okay, that's our um adjust before you allocate all right so when you adjust you need to make sure that the expense that you trying to record belongs to the current financial year only current year uh, only current financial year expenses can be recognized as expenses certain expenses will be part of the cost price of the product but certain expenses will just be operating expenses so the ones that are part of the, um, the cost price of the product will enable you to calculate your gross profit. Okay, now when we read um, the cost that they're talking about, it's the first one is water and electricity. They said water and electricity paid during the year amounted to 36,000. So this is the amount that was given to you in the 12 months. And then they say to you the March 2022 account of 3,000 has already been paid. Remember I told you right when we started, I said you need to take note of your financial year. And you will have noted that your financial year starts on the 1st of March 2021 and it ends on the 28th of Feb 2022. So March is outside the financial year. March is the beginning of the next financial year. And already for the next financial year, when it comes to water and electricity, we have paid 3,000. That 3,000 rent is the prepaid expense. We need to minus it from the total amount of water and electricity that is being paid, which is the 36,000. So you're going to take 36,000 minus the 3,000 because that 3,000 does not belong to the current financial year. That is adjust. Now we're going to allocate. Okay. We know that of the 3,000, 200 out of 300 will go to the factory. Okay, not of the 3,000, of the 33,000. Okay, remember we adjusted the 36,000. We minus the 3,000 because the 3,000 does not belong to the current financial year. We know that of the 33,000, 200 out of uh, 300 will go to the factory. And 50 of the 33,000, uh, 50 out of 300 of the 33,000 will go to sales. And 50 of the 3,000 out of 300 of the 33,000 will go to admin. Let's do exactly that. Let's record it. I will start with factory overheads. Obviously, we cannot trace water and electricity to the product. It can't be directly traced. That's why it goes to factory overheads. So water and electricity will be 36,000, you minus the 3,000, and then you allocate. I said 200 out of the 300 will go to 50 overheads. Adjust and then allocate. Fifteen of the 33,000 out of 300 will go to selling and distribution.
and the other 50 will go to admin. You got it right? Okay. We will finish this in the next video. Please check out the next video.